The normal cut, as compared to cuts with considerably greater or smaller nozzle distances than that specified, demonstrates in this case, too, that maintenance of the nozzle distance given in the table is absolutely essential. Hole piercing is the ideal method of starting a cut in the plate. Modern cutting machines are equipped as a rule with automatic hole piercing control. Where that is not so, piercing must be carried out by hand until the photoelectric control system takes over and continues the cutting operation. When starting a cut in the plate, care must be taken not to continue cutting with a spattered nozzle if the heating flame or cutting stream are disturbed. Because perfect adjustment of the heating flame and the cutting oxygen stream is the vital basic requirement for good quality of the cut. We'll now examine these two factors. For this, a conventional torch is integrated into an optical system that makes striae visible. Density differences in the gas stream enable the flow behavior of the heating flame to be examined. Similarly, the dispersion of the cutting oxygen stream can also be observed, even showing, as here, the pressure nodes of the supersonic flow that are characteristic of a heavy-duty nozzle. An efficient heating flame is required to initiate and maintain a flame cutting operation. Without it, every cutting operation must automatically break off. Moreover, in addition, the heating flame stabilizes the cutting oxygen stream. Whereas without a heating flame, the cutting stream, as clearly visible here, is dispersed by turbulence shortly after leaving the nozzle, when enveloped by the heating flame, it becomes more than twice as long. Nozzles on which some of the heating orifices are blocked by spatter simply cannot give good cutting results. For on examining such a nozzle with a striation imaging system, we see that on the side with an inadequate heating flame, ambient air is swirled in and deflects the cutting oxygen stream. A damaged cutting oxygen orifice has a similar adverse effect. Here, however, the deflection is even more clearly visible. With this sort of nozzle, cutting defects are absolutely unavoidable. To sum up, here again it can be said, optimal quality of cuts only with perfectly sound clean nozzles. A one-sided or only partly burning heating flame results in one-sided melting of the upper edge of the cut and leads to generally poor quality of the cut. This is what the cut profile of a nozzle with a damaged cutting orifice looks like. Any further comment is superfluous. A further influencing factor in flame cutting is the condition of the plate surface. At times it may be problematical and must be taken into account when setting the cutting parameters. Scale-bearing, severely rusted or primate plates, which may additionally bear markings, are often the cause of a cut breaking off, especially when the heating flame is not capable of maintaining the combustion temperature at the plate surface through such a barrier layer. It is self-evident that a fuel gas with a high flame temperature offers clear advantages under such conditions. But if the energy of fuel gas is really to be utilized to the full, it is essential, as already mentioned, for the mixing ratio of fuel gas to oxygen to be correct, for efficiency and flame temperature depend on it. Acetylene, for example, with a mixing ratio of one cubic meter of fuel gas to one cubic meter of oxygen, that is, one to one, reaches a flame temperature of 3,100 degrees centigrade. When the mixing ratio is increased to one to 1.5, the acetylene flame reaches its maximum flame temperature of 3,160 degrees centigrade. Other fuel gases call for different mixing ratios. It is absolutely essential to bear this in mind. The chart clearly illustrates that propane, for instance, needs four times the quantity of oxygen to achieve its maximum flame temperature, which is roughly 2,800 degrees centigrade for this gas. Flame temperature plays a decisive role in flame cutting. For the higher the flame temperature, the faster heat is transferred and consequently the faster the possible cutting speed. A decisive factor. For studies have shown that in flame cutting, 
labor accounts for by far the greater part of the costs. Supplementary measurements, among other things, also to check the quantities of the various gases consumed. They are included in cost-benefit analyses, which provide the necessary data for economical flame cutting. In step with the cost-effectiveness studies, quality analyses are carried out. In flame cutting, there is an ever more marked trend towards heavy-duty nozzles with higher cutting speeds, while simultaneously adhering to the requirements of German standard DIN 2310. In this respect, too, series of tests provide practice-oriented measurements for the operator. The object of these film sequences, most of which were shot in Linda's test facilities, is to demonstrate the importance for the operator, also with respect to economy of operations, of knowledge of the various influencing factors such as heating flame, cutting oxygen, cutting speed, and also nozzle distance. <laughs>